What's up Trainiacs? Welcome to this fourth and final video in the four part series about triathlon bike fitting. Today we are talking about how to make incremental adjustments to gradually make yourself more aerodynamic and faster. <music> So what's up triathletes in this fourth part of the four part triathlon bike fitting video series, we're talking about how to incrementally change your bike position to become gradually more aerodynamic. Now, big disclaimer, as I've given to you in all of these videos, I am not a certified bike fitter and I'm not a certified physiotherapist, but I'm just giving you guidelines to get you close to the ballpark of what will be a decent triathlon bike position. As always, if you haven't yet downloaded it, go to triathlonterran.com forward slash bike fit, where you'll have a free downloadable resource to help you get through the process of setting up your triathlon bike for you. So now over the past three videos, what I've given you is a process to get your cleat and pedal position set up ideally for you, your bike saddle position set up ideally for you, and your bar position set up ideally for you. But that is just your starting point. That's kind of your, your ballpark meat and potatoes kind of position. I would call that your half Ironman position. But it's not very aggressive. It's on the cautious side of aggressive. And what you want to do is take that as a starting point and gradually make yourself more and more aerodynamic. If you just start off by slamming the front end and squishing those elbow pads in as tight as possible and getting those knees as close to the top tube as possible, I guarantee that about 95% of you aren't flexible enough to get in that position and put out any sort of power. But that's not to say that we can't get you there gradually and here's how to do it. Number one, I want you to start by going to a physiotherapist. Take some of the footage that you've taken over the course of these three videos, which can just be taken on an iPhone or any sort of phone with a little bit of slow motion capabilities and go to a physiotherapist and show them the position that you're trying to get into and let them know that what you're trying to do is make your elbows a little bit tighter, make your front end a little bit lower so your lower back and hips need to be more flexible and what they'll be able to do is take you through an assessment to see your range of motion currently and what your limiters are and they will be able to prescribe you a series of stretches to get you closer to being able to do that position. Now, depending on how up to date the physiotherapist is on their stretching science, they might not tell you this but to really lengthen your muscles and make your body more flexible for the long term, and I mean long term, longer than like a 30 minute workout, we're talking like long term, sustainable flexibility, you need to take this prescription of stretches that a physiotherapist is giving you and stretch for two to three minutes every single day for about three months. And at that three month period, you will notice significant changes in your flexibility. So take all of those recommendations and start working on that. The next thing that you can do is I want you to put a mirror right in front of your bike. And aerodynamics really comes as simply down to how big is your body from the front. You can spend $10,000 on a bike, $4,000 on a set of wheels, but it pales in comparison to making your body line more aerodynamic. 80% of the drag of the bike trying to move forward is caused by your body. So the more that you can make your body a smaller frontal plane, the more aerodynamic you're going to be. This involves bringing your head down. This involves bringing your elbows in. This involves bringing your knees closer to the top tube. All of that is going to make your frontal area a lot smaller. But if you just go and do that immediately, you're going to cause yourself some issues. So what I want you to do is look at the areas that you can make yourself more aerodynamic. Is it lowering your head? Is it bringing your elbows in? Is it bringing those knees closer to the top tube? Pick one of those items and over the course of two months, 
when you've got a span of two months in between races, gradually move no more than about a quarter of an inch on each side of your body. So for example, I had in between Half Ironman Coeur d'Alene and the Half Ironman World Championships, two months where I was able to look at my frontal plane and notice that I could bring my elbows in a little bit tighter. So I moved each elbow pad by a quarter of an inch. It's now about four weeks later because it takes your body about three to four weeks just to adjust, but we don't wanna just adjust, we wanna adjust and then build strength in that new position. So that's why we do the two months. Make that quarter inch movement on each side of your body and take two months to adjust and then build some strength in that new position and then move on to the next position and combine that physiotherapy with that gradual change every couple of months and over the course of two years you are going to get way more aerodynamic. Now, the final thing that I want you to do relates to training. We haven't really talked about this at all but the more you sit up the more you're undoing all of this work that we're doing to make you comfortable in the saddle, comfortable in the aero bar position, more flexible, more aerodynamic. If you can't make it through the entire bike portion of your race, you are not flexible enough, you are not set up very well, you aren't dialed in. You need to get yourself to a point that you can sit in that aerodynamic position no matter what the distance of the race that you're doing for the entire duration of that race. If you have to sacrifice a little bit of aerodynamics to do that, do that. Comfort and the ability to hold that position is number one in this entire process. So take all of those tips and what I will say is that this is just a guideline. The best thing that you can do for yourself is go and see a professional certified bike fitter, ideally somebody that has a 3D bike fitting system where dots are placed on your body and those dots communicate with a computer that map out your body movement patterns. You take that computer tool and if you pair it with somebody who has a history in bike fitting, what they're gonna be able to do is look at the cues that the computer is giving them and then take the art of bike fitting to look at somebody and say, you know what, I know this is what the computer is telling me, but this is what is gonna be right for this individual based on their physiology and biomechanics. Like I said, you can spend tens of thousands of dollars on bike gear, but if you can't be comfortable in the saddle and you can't put out a lot of power in the aero position, all that money is gonna be going down the tube. It's, it's gonna be like literally going into thin air. So I highly recommend you getting in touch with a certified bike fitter. I highly recommend you downloading triathlonterran.com forward slash bike fit. If you haven't watched any of the other videos, here is the entire playlist. Here is the last video in this playlist. And if you aren't already subscribed, hit the subscribe button below. And if you are subscribed, treat yourself to a nice dessert today. You deserve it. Later, Trainiacs.